In this module, I'm going to give you an introduction to uh, Python. Now, Python is a scripting language. One of the things that this uh, essentially means is that uh, in an interactive way, we can execute either individual lines of code or a small number of uh, lines of code and immediately observe the, the results. And anytime we take this step, uh, this changes the state of the Python execution environment. And one of the implications there is that if I change a variable or if I define a, a function as part of the execution process, then these changes uh, are visible in subsequent steps that we will execute. This means that uh, Python is, is, a, is a nice uh, language in which to prototype uh, quickly uh, new ideas, uh, but it also gives us a lot of power in terms of uh, defining uh, functions and uh, objects uh, as uh, as well, uh, and, and and so what what you'll see over the course of the semester, and and that what I advocate in in the writing of your code is that a reasonable practice is to uh, prototype through the direct interaction uh, interface, but as you start to home in on what your functions should be doing or what what your code should be doing, that you push that functionality out into uh, functions or object definitions. And this will allow you to uh, make reuse that code at a later time. It also cleans up your code a lot. Now we're going to be using uh, on top of Python something called the Jupyter Lab development environment. Uh, a Jupyter notebook is, uh, is consists of a list of uh, cells. Each cell can can have code, it can have other things, and I'll give you examples of those here in a moment. Uh, uh, when, when we type code into a cell and we execute that cell, then that code is pushed into the Python environment. So any, vari any variable changes that we make, any new functions or object classes that we define within the cell, once it's executed, uh, those uh, now change the state of the Python environment. When we execute a cell, that might result in some sort of an output. This might be just textual uh, that, that represents the state of a, uh, of a variable, but we can also have graphics that, that come out of the execution of the cell, and this is displayed within the notebook as well. Cells can also be executed uh, many times. So one place where this comes up is if I define a function and I decide later that that function needs to have some modifications made to it, I'll, I'll change uh, the definition in the cell and then re-execute it. And again, that pushes the, the, the function definition into Python for, for use in subsequent calls. Likewise, we might want to uh, execute an experiment multiple times. And, and so we'll execute that, that cell uh, uh, once per uh, time that we need to do our experiment. Python provides a, a, a standard set of variables. So those of you who are used to object-oriented programming languages, we have a notion of uh, primitive uh, variable types. So those are the our integers and our floats and uh, strings. There's also a, a Boolean uh, type. There are also uh, aggregate variable types. So, so there's a notion of a of a list. So, so you'll see this the terms array uh, or tuple. We'll talk about the distinction here in a few minutes. Uh, Python also provides a hash map uh, type object as part of its definition, and and those turn out to be very uh, useful tools. One of the key properties with Python is that variable types are not explicitly declared in the code. Uh, instead, uh, the, the, the type of a variable is automatically determined by the running context. Uh, Python makes that determination by looking at uh, how the assignment is being made. One of the implications of not declaring variable types is that variable type uh, checking cannot be done at compile or uh, or interpretation stage. It actually is uh, done at runtime. And for those of you who have experience with runtime variable checking versus compile time variable checking, you'll, you'll know that if runtime variable type checking presents uh, sometimes interesting debugging challenges. We'll, we'll just have to, to work through that in, in Python. 
So here's, this is my web browser. I happen to be executing in this case, uh, the Jupyter server on my uh, local laptop. So it's gonna look a little bit different than what you see through the server that we're providing. Uh, let me go ahead and, and uh, create uh, a new notebook uh, in which to work. So uh, we have available just a Python 3 type environment for our notebook, so I'm going to select that. By default, it, it gives me a, an untitled notebook, but we can rename that. So let's call that variables. You'll, you'll notice now on the file browser that this the variables notebook shows up, blow things up a little bit so it's easier to see. Uh, and this is our, our first cell. So, so let's play with a couple of things and then uh, see what the results are. So here in the cell, I'm going to uh, create a couple of variables. And, uh, and execute that. Actually, let me do that one more time. So one way to execute is, is by pressing this play button here. Uh, at this stage, I'm very used to actually using the shift enter uh, uh, mechanism in order to execute the cell. So you won't actually see me hitting the, the play button very often. Now Python will, will see the five here as, uh, as an integer itself, but when there's a decimal point involved, then it's going to uh, assume that the variable B is a, a floating point number. So now, now we can ask, uh, now that I've executed this, this cell, we can ask what the values are of, of these variables. So A here, uh, play gives me my five, B and play gives me my uh, 2.7. All right, so basic stuff. Um, one tool that'll be useful to you uh, is, uh, is printing. So there's a, a, a print function that can take any number of uh, arguments, so printing A, again, gives us a five. Uh, print B uh, gives us our 2.7. Uh, we can also give it two arguments, in which case it gives us a, a space separated uh, list of the values. Likewise, I can also give it strings. Oops. And execute. Okay, um, I can also ask, I can also print, say, the result of some sort of an expression. Here we're adding A to B. Now A is an integer, B is a float. Uh, Python will automatically infer that we need to do the conversion from int to, to float and return a float as a, as a result. So there's our 7.7. .7. That's the result of that addition process. Okay, so let me give you a new, an, an example of adding a little bit of uh, documentation to, to code. You'll notice that for this cell, we have, uh, it's, it's declared as containing code. This is uh, the default as you're creating new cells, but we can also tell uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, that we're actually uh, providing just textual information. And Markdown, um, this is a, a very simple markup language. Uh, if for those of you who are experienced in using HTML or, or something along those lines, uh, it makes it very easy to uh, create uh, formatted text. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and set this up. So, so the pound sign means that we're, we're asking for a heading level one type. Two pounds give, gives us uh, heading level two. So, so let me ex execute that, and you'll see that it, it gives me a very large font uh, and then a smaller uh, font on the next line there. Okay, so let's go about uh, playing a little bit with strings. So there I'm assigning a, a, a variable. There I'm assigning a, a variable to a string value, and I can, I can print that value. Uh, and I can also print multiple things. So str c. So it's going to append those two strings uh, together. Um, 
you'll notice that there are really two spaces being being printed out here. Um, and, that, and that's because I, I provided one space here and then the print uh, function itself uh, adds a, a space between the two things that are being printed. You'll notice also that I'm being a little bit lax in flipping back and forth uh, between single quotes and double quotes for strings. Uh, my sense is that the more Pythonic way of uh, handling strings is through single quotes. I'll, I'll try and stick with that uh, standard as much as possible. Uh, in Python, documentation is inline documentation is done with a, a pound sign. So let's uh, add uh, a little bit of documentation here. And uh, so let's go ahead, colon plus C. So, so when I'm dealing with strings, the plus operator is a string concatenation uh, operation. And if we execute that, then, then we get uh, what we expect. So let's try for fun. Oops. Let's try for fun. Say I want to also uh, print out my uh, value of uh, B here. And, and you'll notice that Python has given me an error. And the issue is that uh, this piece is a string, this is a string, this is a string, but when we get to B, it's a float. And uh, Python, by default, doesn't know how to, uh, what, what plus, the plus operator means when presented with a string and a, a float. So we must, in this particular example, one way to address that is, is by uh, explicitly converting the, the, the uh, float to a string, so the str, uh, function will will universally do that for us, so we can execute that, and then we get uh, the output that we're expecting. Okay, so let's. I'm going to do another example here with with Markdown. So, from C and C plus plus Java as well. Uh, we're, we're used to having uh, formatted string capabilities. I'm going to give you a, a quick example of it. I won't explain all of the syntax, uh, but we'll, we'll exercise it enough here in the next week uh, to where that's going to be uh, more clear. Um, so, oops, sorry about that. So I can give a formatted string. So I'm going to give a an integer, a float, and a string. So so this feels a lot like f printf or printf in C C++. Uh, and the way you provide arguments to to this. So 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 what this formatting string says is we're going to give str colon, and then the next argument is going to be uh, an integer, we'll treat it as an integer. The next one is, we're, we're treating as a float, and the next one we're treating as a, as a string. The, the Pythonic way of providing this, is, the syntax looks like this. And B comma C. So, so A up above was declared as an integer, B uh, was created as a float, and C was a string. Uh, and this just says, uh, substitute that first argument into the first percent D, the second argument into percent F, uh, et cetera. So if we execute that, uh, then, then we get what we uh, expect. Now like C, C and C++, we can also be a little bit more uh, specific about our formatting. So this 2.7 is with lots of uh, trailing zeros is a bit ugly, but I can, uh, like in C++, I can constrain uh, how many decimal uh, points that, that get generated. So 0 0.3 says, give me three digits past the, the decimal point. And there's my 2.700. Okay, so let's uh, move on to another example. Just to make it clear that these, these variables are indeed mutable here. 
so we've set b to be one thing, and now let's write a little bit of code that prints out the current value, resets the value to something else, and then prints out that, that value uh, again. And you'll see that the first thing that gets printed is the original value of b, and now uh, b has changed to 2.87. Um, likewise, if I were to ask what B is now in another cell, this is being executed in the context of the, the Python environment, and, uh, and, and the current state of B is this 2.87. Okay, so let's do just a little bit with Boolean variables. So I can do things like, so true and false, capital T or F are keywords within Python. So I can assign a variable to, uh, to be a true, and then I can access that value as expected. Um, I can also ask the question, let's see, let's print A and that variable e to be the result of this expression, a less than, than three, and then we'll print out e. So notice that none of these lines of code are executed until we actually execute this cell. And, and we get, as, as a result, we get the values that we expect. So a was originally five, and then we ask the question of whether or not five is less than three, and, and e is uh, set to the value of false. Okay, uh, let me do one more demonstration here about uh, changing types of variables. So D, we just set up above. Um, I'm going to assign it now to two and print it out again. So, so here, D was originally a Boolean value, but in the context of the assignment here, it's now changing over to be uh, an integer. Uh, and that's reflected here in the true and, and the two that are being printed out. All right, so that's the very quick uh, introduction to primitive variables, and we'll, we'll start talking about uh, some of the higher level uh, types of variables here in a few minutes.